Andrew Viterbi. Uh, I, uh, I have worked in uh, wireless for 50 years and uh, I still enjoy it. I proposed uh, some 40 years, over 40 years ago, the Turby algorithm, which is now in uh, just about every digital cell phone, which is somewhere in the order of two billion units uh, worldwide, and also in many uh, other electronic communication systems, such as uh, television from uh, satellites, and also magnetic recording, and also uh, um, speech recognition, and uh, most recently I was told uh, also in uh, analyzing uh, DNA sequences. I was born in Italy in 1935, but I came to the United States with my parents in 1939 when I was only four years old, and uh, therefore uh, most of my culture, or all of my culture is really American. I lived in Boston, across the river from uh, MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and a little bit uh, from my environment, my parents, uh, uh, the scene in Boston, uh, I felt uh, that uh, that was a, an exciting place to go. And even, even at that age, I already uh, found some enjoyment in, uh, in mathematics. Uh. I entered uh, uh, in 1952 as a freshman, and uh, I, um, uh, after a year, I chose electrical engineering. And then uh, in 1957, after uh, receiving my master's degree, I <coughs> came to California, to Pasadena, to work for uh, Caltech uh, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And I stayed there for six years, and uh, after um, getting my PhD at USC, I had an offer to uh, join the faculty at UCLA as an assistant professor, and I went there and stayed there for 10 years. In uh, the early, mid-60s, uh, I was teaching a course in information theory. This is the theory that was originally uh, devised by Claude Shannon and then uh, expanded upon by thousands of others. And in teaching this, uh, I, f I found that uh, rather hard to teach the first year graduate students. So um, in so doing, I, I, uh, I, I found this, what I saw as a natural way of explaining the performance of the code. And in so doing, I came up with this, uh, uh, this technique which uh, uh, turned out to be an optimum technique, although at the time I didn't realize it. In mid-century, uh, it was uh, determined that uh, by doing uh, certain kinds of signal processing, we could achieve uh, communication that was virtually error-free. Then we have uh, worked to achieve uh, the goal of uh, uh, transmitting at uh, the highest possible rate with the lowest uh, distortion or errors. And uh, uh, this is where a number of algorithms have been proposed and there's, in fact the field is still evolving. In uh, wireless communications, uh, what it does in the simplest terms is it uh, prevents errors from happening. That is to say, a number of zeros and ones bits are transmitted, uh, and by doing a certain process at the transmitter, we introduce what's called redundancy. Uh, which will allow us to correct the errors at the other end, but it's really not the correction of errors, it's the prevention of errors. So uh, this algorithm and others will take in everything that they receive and select out of it the correct transmission and 
uh, with a minimum of errors. And we strive, uh, for example, for one error in a million. It's applied mathematics, of course, but it's software or hardware, but it's, it's a, uh, uh, and therefore it's engineering. At the beginning, it was still a, uh, a, a large drawer. And by, I think by 1985, we had the first chip that uh, implemented the whole algorithm. And now it is a minuscule portion of one chip. In uh, 1968, we incorporated, but it was just a really a consulting business. Uh, by the early 70s, uh, we had uh, moved the uh, company that originally had started in uh, Los Angeles, right on the edge of the UCLA campus. We moved it down here uh, to San Diego, and uh, one of our uh, one of the three collaborators, Erwin Jacobs, uh, took uh, took it on full time. The rest of the other two of us were still in uh, UCLA uh, teaching. And uh, in 1973, I moved down, and this first company was called Linkabit Corporation. Uh, most of our work was for, for government. Uh, uh, all branches of the uh, Department of Defense, as well as NASA. Uh, but by 1980 or so, we started doing commercial things and got into uh, uh, commercial satellite communication. In 1980, we sold the company to a conglomerate that no longer exists called Maycom. And we both left in uh, early uh, 1985 and after three or four months started Qualcomm Incorporated. And at Qualcomm, we took on some of the same government contracts actually, uh, but uh, more importantly, we took on a uh, commercial customer uh, that had uh, conceived of uh, uh, providing uh, two-way satellite and position location for the uh, trucking industry. And it launched Qualcomm, really. And, uh, and uh, uh, it wasn't until uh, the very uh, 1989, a few years later, that we actually started on the cellular phone business. And many things happened after that. But yes, I mean, if I... Uh, if I had looked at it in 1985, I never, never would have imagined that it would have gotten uh, where it did. Uh, by the year 2000, when I retired, uh, well, it had been a very interesting 15-year ride. Technology moves on. Uh, there are uh, in uh, UMTS, uh, um, the, the new wideband CDMA, uh, they're, I believe they're still using the Viterbi algorithm for voice because it's a very low, it does not introduce delay. For data, they are also using some uh, newer techniques, turbo codes, which are related to uh, convolutional codes. So, so it's, it's a similar algorithm, but it's, it's a refinement, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a new generation. If you, if you talk about the algorithm per se, it applies in a lot of other places. And the reason it does is that uh, whether it's the coding technique for uh, communication, convolutional codes, or whether it's a, uh, uh, a physical phenomenon or a psychoacoustic phenomenon, as in uh, speech, uh, in the formation of speech, where the next event, in, in our case communication is the next bit, or the next uh, set of bits depends only on the last bit or set of bits, then my algorithm applies. And it's almost a natural evolution from it. It's, it's, as I pointed out early, uh, it, uh, I just happened to pick up this golden nugget anybody else could have. <laughs>